In Activity 7, Food Chains, students learn how living organisms in an ecosystem depend on each other for food. Students observe the eating habits of the organisms in the aquariums and define these feeding relationships as a food chain. Then they brainstorm a list of organisms that live in and around a lake or pond and discuss what they eat. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 7, Parts A and B, Aquariums from Activity 6, Cover Slips, Depression Slides, Plastic Dishes, Droppers, Magnifiers, Algae, Daphnia, Fish Food, and Pocket Scopes. You will also need to provide Scissors, Crayons, White Paper, Glue, and Spring Water. To prepare for this activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 7, Parts A and B, for each student. Do not feed the Daphnia for 24 hours to ensure that they will eat when fed during this activity. Place the Daphnia, the algae, a jug of spring water, and the fish food at a distribution station. Each team of four will need scissors, their aquarium, two plastic dishes, two magnifiers, one dropper, one depression slide, one cover slip, crayons, two sheets of white paper, and some glue. Teams will need to share the four pocket scopes. To begin the activity, initiate a class discussion about the student's favorite foods and ask, why do you eat food? Students will probably respond that they eat because they are hungry. Remind students that all living things need food to live and grow. Next, ask students, does anyone here like to eat hamburgers? Where do hamburgers come from? Some students may say the store. Explain that hamburger is made of meat that comes from cows. Begin a food chain diagram with the class. Start by drawing a stick figure of a person. To the left of the person, draw a picture of a cow, then draw an arrow from the cow to the person. Then ask, what do cows eat? Students should say that cows eat grass. Draw a clump of grass to the left of the cow and an arrow from the grass to the cow. Explain to students that every ecosystem contains food chains. The plants and smaller, simpler organisms are eaten by the bigger animals, which are, in turn, eaten by even bigger animals. Next, divide the class into teams of four. While students retrieve their aquariums, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 7, Part A, to each student and the materials to each team. Have students place several dropperfuls of algae into one dish and about an inch of water and a dropperful of Daphnia into the other. Spend a few minutes discussing what students learned about algae and Daphnia in the previous activity. Then ask, what do Daphnia eat? Students should recall that Daphnia eat algae. Have students place a drop of algae into their dish of Daphnia and observe what happens. The Daphnia should migrate to the algae and become more active. Have students place several drops of algae water and one or two Daphnia in the well of a depression slide. Cover the slide and examine it with a pocket scope. Ask students, what are the Daphnia doing? They will see that the Daphnia are eating the algae by waving the food into their mouths with their appendages. Then, draw a food chain starting with algae and Daphnia. Next, tell students to look in their aquariums. Then ask, what do platys eat? So far, most students have seen platys eat only commercially prepared fish food. Explain that tropical fish food contains, among other things, fish meal, shrimp meal, aquatic plants, and krill. Ask students, are there any animals in our aquarium kits that are similar to shrimp? Students should remember from Activity 6 that Daphnia are related to shrimp. Have students place a few Daphnia into their aquariums and observe the reaction of the fish. The platy should eat the Daphnia quickly. Add platy to the food chain. Next, turn students' attention to the snails in the aquarium and ask students, what do snails eat? Students should observe that snails eat algae leafy plants, and decaying plant leaves. They may have also seen snails feeding on dead platy. Guide students to now draw three diagrams illustrating the snail's place on the aquarium food chains. First, draw algae eaten by a snail, then draw leafy plants eaten by a snail, and finally draw dead plants and animals eaten by a snail. Have students complete Activity Sheet 7, Part A. As a class, Brainstorm a list of organisms that live in or near a lake or pond, then ask the students to tell which of the organisms listed eat which other organisms. You should come up with numerous food chains, with most plants and animals in more than one chain. Ask students, 
What do you notice about every food chain? Students should notice that plants are at the beginning of every chain. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 7, Part B, and a pair of scissors to each student. Give each team some glue. Instruct students to cut out the strips along the dotted lines and then make a paper chain in the order in which each plant or animal gets eaten. When they have finished, ask students, what is the correct order of the links in this food chain? The order of the food chain is plant, insect, small fish, large fish, and bear. Point out that the bicycle does not belong in the food chain. Finally, tell students that natural ecosystems, such as lakes and ponds, produce or contain all of the food that the living things in them need to survive. Most animals living in the wild can find what they need to eat. Animals in captivity, however, such as house cats and aquarium fish, depend on people to provide their food for them. That is why it is important for pet owners to learn what their pets eat and provide the proper amount at the proper time. To conclude this activity, have students return the aquariums to their storage place, Collect and clean all materials and return them to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.